airship horizon bobbed and swayed, tugging at her mooring lines like a rebellious horse pulling against its halter. From his position on the wharf, first mate Gavin Roberts eyed the bloated canopy of the airship critically as he approached the vessel. Tight as a woman's corset, the airship's envelope was straining to hold back cubic yards of agitated steam from bursting loose, and the seams of the airbags were visible underneath their rough canvas cover as they stretched outward in vain efforts to find more space. Robert's gray-green eyes narrowed as they swept the airship critically. Idiot Silverman's ignoring the pressure gauge again, he thought to himself darkly, and increased his pace. Robert stepped irritably around the traffic jam, impatient to get back on board to discover just how much chaos had been unleashed in his brief absence. Mind thus preoccupied, he was completely taken by shock when an enormous explosion rocked the wharf. Shock waves reverberating along the wooden planks as something exceedingly powerful struck it like a battering ram. Knocked off balance, Roberts fell to his knees behind a stack of crates, then rolled quickly out of the way as one at the top teetered for a moment, then fell to the deck with a crash, spilling open and sending a battalion of paper-wrapped opium logs careening across the deck. Shaking his head to clear away some of the shock waves, Roberts was already clamoring to his feet with a fairly good idea of what had just happened. He wasn't mistaken. Rounding the edge of the tower of boxes, Roberts burst into view to see the horizon wreathed in angry smoke. A gigantic hole gouged out of her hull, and her engine shrieking in alarm as the airship sagged on her mooring lines, her airbags already deflating before his eyes as he raced towards her. The once taut envelope was now rapidly deflating from a sizable hole in one of her airbags that must have been caused by a piece of shrapnel tearing through the tough canvas. The jagged wound was loosening steam and angry waves of white, and the airship was losing air by the minute. Boiler explosion, Roberts thought furiously. I'll kill Silverman. Already, the wharf alarm was blaring as soldiers and ship workers poured across the deck, racing for the wounded airship. Roberts reached the edge of the wharf. The horizon was by now a good ten feet below deck, having dropped at least twenty feet in less than a minute, and he didn't think, just acted. Grabbing a mooring rope and a work-hardened hand, Roberts slid the length of it down to the forecastle, which was now several feet higher than the poop deck. The ship's rear sagging downwards as equipment and cargo slid along the angled deck and filled the aft with weight dragging the ships back in towards the waiting ground below. On board the horizon, men were racing up and down, barking out orders or scattershot bits of information, and Robert's eyes quickly swept the crowd as his feet hit the deck. But as he assessed the damage, the groaning squeal of a nearby gantry crane filled the air, mixing with the screams of the horizon's engines overheating and their desperate plight to keep the ship from plunging to the ground. Already the ship had reached the end of her mooring ropes, and the lines were wire-taut, creaking with stress. After a minute of valiant effort, one broke under pressure, the thick line snapping with vicious force, and the airship jerked in recoil, sending her nose down towards the ground as the deck pivoted, loose gear, baggage, and men now sliding towards the bow forward. Another line snapped under the vicious pressure, jarring the airship again and starting a nasty seesaw motion as the horizon continued her uncontrolled descent, the ground below looming up to embrace her in its unyielding arms. Then, with a thunderous crash that nearly rent her asunder, the gantry crane swung into position and plucked the floundering airship from the sky. The horizon rocked chaotically in place, suspended fifty feet from the ground and liberally shedding broken pieces of wood, assorted barrels, and shredded ends of rope into the open air. But she was caught now, and the gantry crane lifted her back up in the wharf and set her in an unoccupied berth as gently as a mother placing her child to bed. With a final coughing grunt, the belabored engine stopped, sending the airbag sagging against the mainmast as the ship rested its full weight on the berth, with the sound of groaning wood and escaping steam filling the air. So, would you like to know what happens next? Well, you know what? I would too, but I need your help for that. My name is Melissa Conroy. I have a steampunk trilogy in the makings, but I need some assistance in getting it started. So, please take a look at a project I have on kickstarter.com that explains what I'm doing and it shows you how you can help me get my steampunk trilogy off the ground and up in the air where it belongs. Thank you.